18-year-old Marjorie was in a relationship with a married, big-time substance dealer named Jim Townsend. Jim told Unwind with Tasha Kay that he made it clear to Marjorie that he didn't want any more children because he already had three. Jim said Marjorie told him she was on birth control. And, well, he fell for the okie doke. <laughs> They went on to have two children, and while she was pregnant with baby number two, Jim was being investigated by the feds for running a smuggling ring and pushing weight across the U.S. He told Radar Online that after the authorities told him they had substantial evidence against his brother and Marjorie, he copped a plea so Marjorie and his brother wouldn't get indicted. Jim was sentenced to life in prison, and Marjorie repaid him by leaving him in the dust less than five years into his sentence. Now, we've shared portions of this story numerous times on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and our TikTok page. Many people in the comments sections don't fault Marjorie for moving on from someone who was going to spend the rest of his life behind bars. However, others agree that Marjorie's actions show that she isn't loyal to anyone but herself. And when the going gets tough, she's up out that thing. In addition to that, if Jim hadn't committed the selfless act of taking the fall for her, her behind would have been locked up in the pen right beside him. Sure would have. But either way, Marjorie made her decision, and Jim had to deal with it. Oh, Jim. Meanwhile, Steve married a woman named Marcia in 1981, and they welcomed three children. One day, Marjorie attended one of Steve's Memphis stand-up shows. Steve and Marjorie typically gloss over the date that they initially met. However, several years ago, they told Essence Magazine that they first met in 1990, which means Steve was still married to Marcia. We've linked that interview in the description box. Marjorie arrived late to the show, and as she walked to her seat, Steve was in awe and couldn't even breathe, honey. He stopped the show and stared her down. Then he finally said, I don't know who this is, but I'm going to marry her. I know you lying. Yeah. Steve, who was a married man at the time, was trying to spit game. Mm, mm, mm. Now, he and Marsha were experiencing marital issues at the time. In fact, Steve was homeless and living out of the back of his Ford Tempo. Now, what the hell is a Ford Tempo? <laughs> I've never seen one. He told People Magazine, I realized you're on your own. You have nothing or no one. Oh, come again now. But didn't he have a wife and three children waiting for him at home? Now, some of you might argue that a married man trying to holler at a little tenderoni isn't considered cheating. However, Steve moved forward with acting on his lustful urges and started clapping Marjorie's cheeks. Marjorie said she knew Steve was the one right away. Girl, but what about his wife? You know what? Never mind. During an interview with Essence, Steve completely skipped over the fact that he was married when they first met. Instead, he stated he couldn't commit to Marjorie because he was living out of his car and wasn't where he wanted to be financially. He said, before a man can be of use to a woman, he's got to know who he is, what he does, and how much he's going to make. Marjorie didn't care. Apparently, she was ready for them to drive that Ford Tempo right into the sunset. <laughs> However, after dating for a bit, Steve suddenly ghosted her. Marjorie picked up the pieces and moved on with another substance dealer named Donnell Woods. They welcomed their daughter, Lori, in January 1997. And before y'all start with all the rumors, Donnell and Jim aren't cousins, nor are they related. So anyway, Marjorie and Donnell got married a few years after Lori was born. And this was around the same time the FBI started investigating Donnell and his family's substance operation. Donnell was eventually sentenced to 37 months behind bars. And you already know Marjorie wasn't trying to wait that long. According to Radar Online, Marjorie managed to finesse her way back into Steve's inner circle by dating his bodyguard, William Big Boom Freeman. On his now defunct website, Big Boom described himself as a former pimp who preyed on women to gain a sense of power and self. We're unsure how long that situation between him and Marjorie lasted. 
Now, back to Steve. He and his first wife, Marcia, got divorced in 1994, and he moved on with a woman named Mary Shackelford, whom he married in 1996. Steve told People Magazine he regretted tying the knot right away. He said, I got married for the wrong reasons. I was tired of being alone. I have to own that. It was me, not her, but it was bad for a long time. They welcomed a son in 1997, but their marriage fell apart in 2005, the exact same year he reconnected with Marjorie. Now say what now? Mary stated in a YouTube video that Steve was a serial cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. And get this, she also claimed Marjorie was just one of Steve's many side chicks. Marjorie called Mary's allegations malicious and baseless. So anyway, Steve told People Magazine he was down and out after things ended, and Big Boom told him, Look, the only time I've ever seen you happy was when you were with that woman, Marjorie. Now, before you go and do something stupid and marry another woman, I'm calling her. Now, hold up now. It's highly unlikely that Steve kept Marjorie's number from when they dated back in the 90s. However, Steve specifically said that Big Boom offered to call Marjorie which means Big Boom was in possession of her number, and it's possible Big Boom stayed in contact with her following their alleged relationship. Because Big Boom had a reputation for being an old Mac from way back, one of the original players from the Himalayas, he probably had no qualms about passing Marjorie back to Steve. So 15 years after ghosting her, Steve dialed them digits. By that point, Steve's career was on the rise. He was no longer homeless and felt comfortable being the man that Marjorie deserved. Once he opened up to her and explained why he ghosted her back in the day, Marjorie started to think about what could have been between them if he had been more honest. She told People Magazine, I told him, I owned my house. Honey, you wouldn't have been homeless. We could have saved so much time. During an appearance on Club Shay Shay, Steve said after he and Marjorie started dating again, all seven of their children went bowling. When the children returned home, the girls decided they didn't want Steve and Marjorie to get married. According to Steve, the children thought their parents needed more time together before they tied the knot. Now, grown folk are gonna do what they wanna do, but maybe their children can see the red flags and were trying to save their parents from heartache. Hmm. Steve and Marjorie got married in 2007, and years later, during an episode of his talk show, Steve admitted... When I married Marjorie, I had some, but we didn't do a prenup, because I knew this is the chick. I'm going to the tape. <laughs> Most people don't enter a marriage with the expectation that it will end in divorce. But just like you don't expect to be hospitalized, you still have health insurance, right? Yeah. A prenup is a form of marriage insurance, and it's a good idea to get one if you have any kind of assets. Many celebrities have been open about obtaining prenups before tying the knot. Beyonce told a German magazine that she and Jay-Z have what she called a marriage contract, and she encouraged any woman to obtain one as well. Gabrielle Union insisted that she and Dwayne Wade sign a prenup, and Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani have one as well. But baby, Steve, with his silly self is setting himself up to be taken to the cleaners since he didn't take the appropriate steps to protect himself ahead of time. But, you know, as long as they stay together, then his fortune will be safe. For now. Okay, back to the story. Jim told Radar Online that Marjorie cut off all communication with him a few days after she married Steve. What was she trying to hide? Others argue that Jim was still the father of her children, and what harm could he really cause to her new marriage while he was locked up? Jim served close to 27 years in prison before President Barack Obama commuted his sentence in January 2017. He has since written a book about his life, including his time with Marjorie. We'll drop a link to the book in our description box. Perhaps Marjorie was quick to cut off contact because she wanted to swiftly integrate their families by having Steve adopt her children. Now, we ain't ones to gossip, but the whole adoption situation is strange as hell. The children she shares with Jim, her daughter Morgan, and son Jason were about 20 and 16 years old at the time Marjorie and Steve tied the knot. 
and her daughter Lori, who she conceived with her ex-husband Donnell, was about 10. How did her children go from disapproving of the relationship to taking on Steve's last name? Now, we can give Lori a pass since she was young, but what 16 and 20 year olds are going to ditch their last name in favor of the last name of the new man in their mom's life? Step parent adoption is a wonderful way to legally and emotionally affirm a new parent's permanent relationship with a child. However, some wonder if her children would have gone through with it if Steve wasn't a super wealthy celebrity. Was the intention to blend their family, or did they plan on using the name for clout? <laughs> okay, let's freeze for a second. <laughs> and let's do a little recap. Marjorie got promoted from Steve's alleged mistress to his wife. They didn't sign a prenup, and Steve adopted her grown-ass kids. <laughs> Marjorie found a sucker and licked it. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. A source close to the couple told Radar Online that Marjorie's past is the reason Steve is heavily protected. The source added, Steve may have a shady past, but it's nothing like the major league guys Marjorie was married to. No wonder he keeps armed guards at his house in Atlanta. Through the years, Marjorie has been accused of blowing through all of Steve's hard-earned money. Her Instagram account is a flashy display of some of her expensive purchases, including a $39,000 Louis Vuitton airplane bag, exotic purses that cost five to six figures each, thousand-dollar dresses, and millions of dollars worth of jewelry. Aside from buying every little thing her heart desires, she's also trying to secure her family's future. Steve admitted that Marjorie told him they needed to put money away for their grandchildren. Now, hold up now. I paid away for their ass. Now, I got to break away for their kids, too. This is So not only did Steve adopt her children and provide for their grown asses, but Marjorie expected him to take care of her children's children as well? Child, not Uncle Steve out here getting finessed. But get this. Steve finally put his foot down. I told my kids, I said, listen, man. I'm telling you right now, me and your mama is spending 85% of all the money I'm making. The grandkids going to have a little college account. I give them a little bit of money when they turn 25. That's the plan. After that, man, you got to get your ass out here and hustle. I know that's right. Sadly, through the years, there have also been numerous allegations that Steve and Marjorie were headed toward divorce. In July 2018, Radar Online reported Steve was leaving Marjorie for Kris Jenner. The couple clapped back by sharing happy photos from one of their many vacations. Radar Online was back at it again in May 2019 when they reported Steve quietly put four of his Texas properties on the market in an effort to liquidate his assets ahead of a divorce battle. The website added that after a bitter blowout, Marjorie responded by taking Lori on a month-long trip around the world, a trip that Marjorie heavily documented on her Instagram account. And then, ahead of their 13th wedding anniversary in 2020, the National Enquirer alleged that Marjorie was fed up with Steve being a horn dog. <laughs> An insider added the couple's marriage had been strained due to the cheating rumors, and things allegedly got worse after two of Steve's shows got canceled. The insider added that because Steve had cheated on both of his previous wives, Marjorie needed to be cautious. Is it true that once a cheater, always a cheater? Hmm, sometimes. According to ChoosingTherapy.com, some serial cheaters experience guilt over their actions, while others show little or no remorse. However, some people think he's finally receiving his karma for being a bad husband to his ex-wives. In August 2023, rumors swirled on social media that Marjorie cheated on Steve with his bodyguard and their chef. Some people have identified the bodyguard as Big Boom. However, here at RRG, we can confirm that Big Boom is married and lives in Texas. We're unsure if he's even still employed as Steve's bodyguard as of this video. The rumors about Marjorie's alleged affairs popped up out of nowhere, which is why RRG was hesitant to even address them. Over here, we only like to pull our information from credible sources. But anyway, Marjorie addressed the allegations in an Instagram post. She wrote, 
My husband and I don't usually stop to address all the foolishness and lies that have been spread about us. However, to whom much is given, much is required. I understand that with my platform comes some sort of responsibility to those that may not be as strong as we are. Huh? What the hell? So was she getting knocked down by the bodyguard and chef or nah? That's all we want to know.